Alrighty, so um, beginning with I'm proud of this limb salvage case. Uh, disclosure slide didn't come up there, but we'll, we'll start with this. So um, with regards to disclosure, since it didn't pre-populate, we have institutional grants with Abbott and Medtronic and personal education and device development uh, consulting as well. So for this case, it's a 65-year-old gentleman, history of end-stage renal disease after a renal transplant back 16, 17 years ago, maintained on immunomodulary therapy with, which jumps out, a creatinine of 3.2, significantly increased from a creatinine of 2.0 in just in the past year. Coronary disease with status post PCI, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes on insulin, and severe bilateral lower extremity neuropathy. Now, in the setting of that neuropathy, he, as so many of those patients do, developed a non-healing wound at the base of the fifth metatarsal of the left lower extremity. Uh, obviously, initially in the setting of the neuropathy, he wasn't appropriately offloading that wound, but has been undergoing eight months of effective offloading, wound care, debridement, hyperbaric uh, therapy as well, without improvement in that wound and, in fact, worsening, now complicated by a superficial cellulitis. Angiography in this patient with an 18-year-old kidney transplant and a creatinine 3.2 was deferred by his previous teams, and he was sent for a second opinion in the setting of the complete just lack of healing of this wound. By his non-invasive testing at the level of the left leg, he had non-compressible vessels of the, of the DP and P, AT and PT, and a um, TBI of 0.2, obviously dulled monophasic waveforms on the left side as well. By his arterial duplex, particularly important in an individual, of course, you don't want to expose uh, contrast to if you don't have to. We see it as popliteal. He has initially, um, in the proximal popliteal, a fairly normal, at least biphasic waveform at a velocity of 47, and then a significant increase, about a tripling, uh, up to 148 beyond a lesion demonstrated on color Doppler. Distal to it, spectral, dulling, spe spectral blurring and dulled upstroke, suggestive of a popliteal lesion. And our plan on this gentleman was hydrate right common access, CO2 angiography, and then figure out exactly what's going on all the way down to the foot, precipitating that low uh, TBI in the setting of that non-healing wound. Pre-procedure testing is extremely important in these individuals, of course, particularly when you're using carbon dioxide angiography, just because there's different opportunities to visualize different things to a different level of efficacy. And so by that same duplex, we knew we had biphasic, fairly normal waveforms at the level of bilateral CFAs. And so we got ultrasound, guided micropuncture access as is typical, put an omniflush catheter up and did carbon dioxide angiography to give us a sense of what was going on in the aorta iliacs, which we were expecting to be fairly normal based on segmental ABI as well as our duplex. We then used that same image to go up and over to the level of the left CFA, took selective pictures in the left CFA, demonstrating a normal common femoral, normal proximal and mid superficial femoral artery. And then to optimize our CO2 pictures, we selected that superficial femoral with the woolly wire, chased with a glide catheter down into the left SFA and took some more pictures. By these images, as we see, hopefully, when it starts playing, one, that carbon dioxide's working its way down, and then there's a little something going on in that popliteal. Not the craziest picture in the world, but a little bit something. We put the patient into Trendelenburg, which is a trick commonly used in CO2 angiography because of the buoyancy of carbon dioxide. We took that repeat picture, and again, something there. Now again, this was an individual that we wanted to obtain inline flow down to the level of the foot. And so in that setting, we knew there was below knee, knee, below knee disease as well as ankle disease by the level of our pre-procedure uh, pre testing. So rather than taking selective pictures at this point before bringing a sheath up and across, we saw this lesion, we knew what was going on, we knew there were some collaterals there, we brought our sheath up and over. So before we did that, we tried taking a CO2 picture below knee, and as you get to the smaller vessels further away from your catheter, certainly carbon dioxide is somewhat limited. So we were done with that as we took these photos. At this point, we've given no contrast. So at this point, with zero cc's of contrast, we brought our sheath up and over. Uh, we had duplex and carbon dioxide testing suggestive of a popliteal disease, and then tibial disease not yet identified, but also suggested by our pre-procedure testing. We also knew we did not have any pressure dampening to our mid-SFA by comparison to our aorta. So we knew our aorta iliac segments were clear both by CO2 as well as hemodynamics. With our woolly in the mid-SFA, we then brought a six French sheath up and over to the mid-SFA, and we gave our first dose of contrast, so 50-50 contrast, four cc's, to look at that popliteal segment. Now, on first glance, that popliteal segment certainly doesn't look terrible by an angiogram, but it looks odd by angiogram. 
So this is a situation where is that area of obfuscation of contrast and also, you know, a 20, 30 percent lateral lesion, but something going on there. But we knew by duplex we had tripling of velocities, um, uh, and we knew that there very well may be something real going on there. Now, typically, you take pictures in multiple projections to see if this was truly a posterior lesion versus a lateral lesion. Instead, we didn't want to give any more contrast, so we used our four cc's. We decided we'd IVIS evaluation as well as hemodynamic evaluation. So we put an 014 nitrix wire down through it. Actually, that wire buckled at that little thing that didn't look like a lesion, but it moved past uh, effectively and fairly smoothly. Chased it with a trailblazer and did indeed see a, a pressure drop of about 20 millimeters of mercury across that. And then the plan was to do IVIS, but before we do that, we wanted to take just our second picture to see what was actually going on down at the level of below knee. And so we took this picture just through the trailblazer, again, minimizing contrast, with contrast being given right at the level of the popliteal. And sure enough, at the distal anterior tibial, it's effectively obliterated. The distal posterior tibial also effectively obliterated. But when you hang on contrast for long enough, you start seeing a medial and a lateral plantar come down into plane as an option for therapy to treat that angiosome by that affected base of the fifth metatarsal wound. So, Here's that picture, and then we IVIS that picture. And sure enough, as we IVIS and we'll let it play through twice, you see that there was that level of disease inside the popliteal. It's a fairly linear lesion, and that one angiogram that we took was likely in plane, and that's why all we saw was that 30% stenosis, but proximal or anterior and posterior, there's more significant disease. That's what that looked like by comparison to just distal to just proximal. And so our first thing was to fix the inflow. And so we actually marked with IVIS exactly where the lesion was to avoid taking any more pictures. We put a spider embolic protection device down beyond the lesion and being in the popliteal and the goal obviously to try to avoid scaffolds when possible, we did Hawk 1 directional atherectomy in that area. We still haven't given any more contrast. Next thing that we did is we did quote unquote poor man's IVIS. We did a size to 60 by 40 by IVIS balloon. We did that rotational fluoroscopy to see where our residual areas were left to be cut. And sure enough, as you can see, though it's good in many planes, in that first plane there was still some residual highly calcified disease. We then lined up our camera in that particular plane and we cut purely lateral and we did a couple more cuts. Then we did a little more debulking in that territory. We then treated with a 60 by 40 impact admiral drug coated balloon with complete balloon expansion and effectively had that segment treated. We took another picture with 50-50 dye just to make sure no dissection or perforation and it looks pretty darn good. Now our first picture looked pretty darn good too, <laughs> but this one also looks good. We knew no complications. We know also that we've only used 16 cc's of contrast dye. Using this overlay, we then wired into the proximal PT. And the beautiful thing about this is that non-compressible vessel by uh, ABI and duplex was easy to track all the way down the leg and we knew it was open. So we brought it all the way down to the level of the occlusion. We chased it with that 018 uh, a, a trailblazer microcatheter. And then at the level of the occlusion, we were able to flip a fielder XT through the microchannel into the lateral plantar. Again, wire move free, wire move slow. We also have calcium in the lateral plantar, so we knew exactly where we were. So without giving another contrast bolus, we did a 2.5 by 40 millimeter chocolate angioplasty balloon in that segment. We've now treated the popliteal, we've treated the PT, and we took a runoff picture. Again, it's 50-50. Here's what it looks like as it fills with inline flow at both the medial and lateral plantar. Here's what it looks like on side by side as it fills. And the best part about this is in this gentleman with an 18-year-old kidney transplant, a creatinine of 3.0, we finished the case with 20 cc's of contrast. So in terms of a case I'm proud of, I'm proud because we achieved inline flow to the wound bed using contrast angiography. I'm proud that we trusted our non-invasive testing up front and didn't say, oh, that popliteal looks okay. It's probably fine. Instead, we did a more dedicated imaging evaluation of it. I'm proud that we integrated IVIS as well as quote-unquote diagnostic angioplasty to optimize our debolting strategy. And also, we took the work all the way down to the level of the foot with pedal therapies to provide inline flow to that wound bed. So for all those reasons, I think it's kind of an interesting case that uh, we used a lot of different techniques in. All right.